powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the Noon News from Montana's News Leader. Good afternoon. We're glad you could join us before you head out for the weekend. I'm Asia Gore. President Trump ordering the U.S. Trade Representative to consider an additional $100 billion in trade tariffs against China. CBS's Weijia Zhang has more on the developing trade war between the two powerful countries. President Trump dismissed the possibility of a trade war with China during a radio interview that aired Friday morning. We've already lost a trade war. We don't have a trade war. We've lost a trade war. And now it's $500 billion in deficits and a theft of $300 billion in uh, intellectual property. So you can't have this. But the threat of a trade war became more real after President Trump announced he is considering an additional $100 billion in new tariffs against China. It's the latest escalation in an economic tit for tat. China has already threatened $50 billion of tariffs on U.S. exports, such as soybeans, pork, and aircraft. That came in response to President Trump's proposed $50 billion in tariffs on Chinese goods earlier this week. The White House called the Chinese tariffs an unfair retaliation. China says they are appropriate and warns it will respond again if necessary. China's foreign ministry said in a statement, we do not want to fight, but we are not afraid to fight a trade war. Blame China. White House Don't economic advisor Larry Don't Kudlow blame. says there's still time for the two countries to negotiate a deal. Hopefully. This will have a very happy ending. I'm still optimistic, by the way, that the Chinese recognize that the rest of the world is on our side. In the meantime, President Trump has ordered his agricultural secretary to find a way to protect American farmers who may be impacted by the Chinese tariffs. Weijia Jiang, CBS News, the White House. The $50 billion in tariffs the U.S. has already announced won't take effect until at least mid-May. China says it won't implement any tariffs unless the U.S. does so first. Here in Montana, schools in Belgrade are closed today after administrators say a credible threat was made at the high school. Officials say while there is no immediate threat, they are taking action to keep all students and staff safe as a thorough investigation takes place. This is the second time in two months Belgrade schools have closed due to a threat. In February, a shelter in place went into effect after the high school after students overheard talks about a school shooting. Authorities found that, cre that threat was not credible. A Bozeman man who admitted his role in the death of a five-month-old baby likely won't s spend time in prison. 23-year-old Brandon Moss was sentenced in Gallatin County District Court Tuesday to a 15-year suspended sentence. Moss pleaded guilty earlier to negligent homicide for causing the death of a baby at a Bozeman hotel in 2015. The coroner found the baby died from blunt force trauma to the head and neck. Moss was initially charged with deliberate homicide but accepted a plea deal in February. Bozeman police are questioning multiple people about a methamphetamine lab discovered at a motel last week. Police were called to the Super 8 motel in Bozeman to investigate a small meth lab. The Missouri River Drug Task Force has called in a crew from Salt Lake City to clean up the lab and to follow up with the property owner. No injuries were reported. No suspects have been arrested. A disturbing case of animal cruelty now under investigation in Ravalli County. That's where someone stole two pet beagles, kept them alive until one had puppies, then killed the adult beagles. The dogs, Trigger and Copper, disappeared in late January. Copper is a miniature beagle who was pregnant at the time. An extensive search turned up nothing until late last week when someone found the bodies of the two grown dogs near Lake Como Road. Copper's puppies had been allowed to nurse until she was ultimately killed. Whoever did this apparently took the puppies. But it's crazy to think that someone's been, they've been keeping them inside this whole time for months and then just to kill them, you know. Her puppies have been nursing on her, you know, so they waited until the puppies were old enough which they'd be eight weeks now, old enough to eat dog food, and then, then kill her, I guess. If you know anything or see the puppies for sale somewhere, contact the sheriff's office. One of the men accused of chaining himself to a cement-filled barrel at the Stevens Creek Bison facility won't serve jail time. The man, known as Wolf, is a member of the Buffalo Field Campaign. He was sentenced to three years probation, ordered to pay a $1,000 fine, and banned from Yellowstone National Park for three years. 
Wolf is the fifth person in less than a month to be arrested for protesting at the bison processing facility near the park. And as snow continues to pile up, crews are hard at work getting Glacier National Park ready for visitors. Spring plowing operations got underway last week. Crews plowed to the camp store in Two Medicine and through Chief Mountain Road on the east side of the park. They're now working on Many Glacier Road on the east side and Camas Road on the park's west side. Crews working in Two Medicine last week saw snow drifts up to 15 to 20 feet deep in roads and picnic areas. Next week, west side crews expect to begin plowing a stretch of the Going to the Sun Road. And on that note, we turn now to the weather scene with Ed McIntosh, and we see snow there. How are we looking for the forecast? You know, we got more snow. In fact, snow and cold have really been highlighting things, Asia. Let's take a look. Yeah, we're going to pick on Billings for just a second here, as we've seen snow yesterday. 5.2 inches of new snow in Billings had pushed it up to the second snowiest winter on record for Billings. And Bozeman at the uh, university also seeing a very snowy winter. That easily broke the old record, plus more than a quarter inch of precipitation fell. That broke a daily record. Then this morning, Billings tied the overnight low at 10 degrees, the record set back in 1939. And if it isn't enough misery, how about Glasgow? Four above this morning broke the record cold temperature for the morning that went back to 1899. More on the weekend forecast coming up. Thanks, Ed. We'll check back in. Montana Governor Steve Bullock is in Iowa today, stumping for Iowa Attorney General Tom Miller in his reelection campaign. But some analysts believe Bullock's visit means something more. Bullock is considered the dark horse Democratic candidate to challenge President Trump in 2020. Meanwhile, a polling firm is reportedly calling Republican voters in Iowa to test the name recognition of Ryan Zinke, the current Secretary of the Interior and former Montana Congressman. An opinion column in the Des Moines Register writes, pollster Gravis Marketing is testing the waters for a potential 2024 presidential run as a successor to President Trump. Energy leaders from across Montana met with Congressman Greg Gianforte to talk about the issues facing their industry. The discussion primarily focused on what changes can be made to make things run more smoothly. One topic was cutting back what they called unnecessary overregulation by the federal government. Todd O'Hare from Cloud Peak Energy said the permitting process alone to dig on federal land can take 10 to 15 years. That's time companies just don't have. In addition, they say the cost is running business out of the state. Well, let's work in partnership to get the common objective, to maintain the quality of life we have in Montana with the quality of jobs we're talking about. Because the jobs, whether it be oil and gas or coal, these people are looking at uh, with benefits over $100,000 a year. That, that's big money in Montana. Those are the kind of jobs we need, and we need those kind of jobs if we're going to keep our kids at home. What we want to do is keep those jobs where they're at in Montana. We have three properties, uh, two of which are, are like that, and one is over the rail facility. We want to keep those jobs in Montana. That's what's important to us. And when this group was asked if it can continue to produce coal, oil, and gas while protecting the environment, the answer was a resounding yes. The Montana Supreme Court hearing arguments today on whether the state constitution allows public dollars to fund private education. The tax credit program provides up to $150 in tax credits for donations made to scholarship programs at private schools. The Montana Department of Revenue argues tax credit scholarships for religious schools violates the state's no aid clause. But religious groups, including families of three students enrolled in religious schools, sued, calling the DOR decision discrimination. The high court should issue a ruling on the matter in the coming months. Still ahead on the new news, a famed mixed martial artist faces an assault charge for his actions outside the ring. Details when we come back. But first, Ed has our weather forecast. Stay with us. You're watching MTN News with Asia Gore. Storm Trekker weather with Ed McIntosh and farm and ranch news from the Northern Egg Network. This is the new news on Q2, Montana's news leader.
Now, here's your Storm Tracker weather forecast with meteorologist Ed McIntosh. Welcome back to the new news. You have to check the calendar against these temperatures. Readings are only into the single digits in Cutbank, teens, most areas east of the Continental Divide, and then some 20s as we start looking into southwest and western Montana. Still see those streaks of snow showers coming through the central portion of the state. And even though they've eased up a little bit, they're still causing some travel concerns. The winter weather advisories, winter storm warnings for north central Montana have expired as of noon, but we still have those travel problems. You're still going to run into some slick roadways and sidewalks. Walks, you're still going to have some visibility problems and that winter weather advisory for south central Montana was scheduled to expire at noon but some lingering snow showers they've decided to let it go just a little bit longer into this afternoon. So while the snow is moving across our region the moisture is starting to move into the Pacific Northwest and the cold that we've been talking about still blanketing areas east of the Continental Divide so while we have some light snow showers for this evening we're really looking at overall just hanging on to some of those cold temperatures so while we were setting some records early this this morning we talked about at the top of the newscast will likely set more records both for cold afternoon highs for today and cold morning lows tomorrow morning east of the continental divide the next weather system is starting to move into western montana through the day scattering areas of rain and snow and possibly even some freezing rain a little bit of thunder tomorrow afternoon certainly wouldn't be a shock at all as this front continues to collide with that colder air and push its way into the region, creating some uh, showers and uh, some uh, snow, especially for the higher elevations. A lot of that's going to linger even into Sunday. A little bit of a warm up as we get later on into the weekend. Tomorrow we'll see a hike in the temperatures overall. We'll start off chilly, start to warm up. And then this high pressure ridge will start to move in behind it. So a very unsettled weekend will continue to hold on to most of the area, a chance of some snow showers. In fact, northeastern Montana, you may get hit more late Sunday into Monday as that low pressure area continues to move out. So today we're looking at these little bands of snow showers. As we get through the afternoon and evening, a little bit of clearing. That should make it especially cold first thing tomorrow with the fresh snow on the ground. And then as we start going from uh, today into tomorrow, the clouds start to push in. And Initially, then there comes that big band of rain coming in and again the potential for some good lift in the atmosphere which could cause some areas where we could see some pockets of some heavier rain some freezing rain or even some rumbles of lightning and thunder here's what's going on we've got uh, teens and 20s for most of the highs east of the divide 30s maybe some 40s in southwest Montana for this afternoon cold overnight we're back into the single digits teens east of the divide and for western Montana, not much warmer into the 20s and 30s. But that's just ahead of the next weather system that starts to move in. So we'll look for scattered rain and snow showers starting to develop. Temperatures will start to drop as that colder air moves in. And we'll, we'll catch some sunshine to allow things to warm up a little bit in eastern Montana. There's a lot of snow to overcome. We're going to be watching for that just to uh, set up for the potential for more rain and snow by Saturday night. So for areas west of the divide, we're going to be looking at a continued chance of rain and snow showers. The rain for the valley certainly. Great Falls in Helena looking at some cold weekend temperatures but starting to try to warm up early next week. Southwest Montana you got more rain and snow on the way through the weekend and uh, er likely early next week it'll start to dry out. Glendive could get hit late Saturday in uh, Billings also more snow. There's the weather now more news. Thanks, Ed. We check in now with some other national headlines of the day. Oklahoma's legislature is taking up revenue-raising bills today after thousands of striking teachers staged a fourth straight day of demonstrations at the Capitol. Now, the bills aren't expected to increase the dwindling education budget, which is a key sticking point for teachers. But lawmakers do say the bills would reassure teachers the money is there for pay raises. Meanwhile, President Trump says he did not know about the $130,000 payment his personal attorney made to an adult film star. Stormy Daniels alleges she had an affair with the president and was paid hush money. The president has denied the affair and says he didn't know Stormy Daniels was paid just days before the 2016 election. Finally, mixed martial artist star Conor McGregor is in trouble with the law following an alleged attack on a bus. It happened during UFC Media Day in New York City. The 29-year-old Irish fighter now faces three counts of assault and one count of criminal mischief. He turned himself into police on Thursday. The latest ag news is next and still ahead. Evil Knievel Days in Butte has some difficult hoops to jump through to keep the show going this year. Details next.